seems like it's more about the whole day experience. It's more about like the, the a, a much bigger show. And I think being a live crowd, I bet it's a lot better than what it is when you're trying to work out VAR, what's going on on the screen and all the rest yeah. of it when you're sitting there in your chairs. Uh, NFL is a lot more transparent, I would imagine, w- yeah. as a live audience person being there. Like. As an NFL fan, I'm much used to... Um, sorry, some ducks are following me. <laughs> uh, <but> that's, <laughs> you don't get that on any other podcast. Um, we'll see a video go up later yeah. going viral. A guy, like six <laughs> of them running after me. Um, but no, you. Um, it is a big experience. I mean, the whole day they put on so much. So, like, for instance, when I've been down there, when the Cowboys came, for instance, the day before they invited everybody in for their training and you watch mm-hmm. them train on the on the pitch and then yep. they went and done like a big speech and then they came out to like this rally parade and then all the cheerleaders come out and you could meet some of the legends and for me nice. as a cow and that was that was incredible and no other team has done that yeah but on the actual days you'll get you know nfl network will come over and they'll set up a big stand and then they do like they present their show in front of you and right. you know, cheerleaders will come out for each of the teams and then the Vince Lombardi Trophy, which is the the main trophy that mm-hmm. you win in the NFL, that that's there. You can go and get yourself pictured with it, and mm-hmm. you can meet legends. And uh, there's American food stalls and burger vans and all that sort of. Just a, it's a huge all day show. And a lot of the American fans, when they come over and they, you might sit next to them, will say this is kind of like a Super Bowl atmosphere. Not as mm-hmm. in how intense it is, but because of the stuff that we're putting on. Yeah, and um, it's just to entice more people to enjoy it. And like you say, it's a whole day thing. You know, you go watch Tottenham, get down there. For me, I, I like to get down there early and watch all the build up. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I like them train. I don't drink or anything, so mm-hmm. it's nice for me to watch people training and that. So you, you only get a couple of hours, but with this, you get just so much more, mm-hmm. uh, and it, it's really good. It's really enjoyable. If no one's ever done it, I mean. Definitely try to. I mean, if you can get tickets, uh, tickets are becoming harder to get now. But as of anything for success. Yeah. No, absolutely. I suppose um, we we can't go without mentioning about some bits of football, being that you are a Spurs fan as well, um, and probably you're my first guest that is a Spurs fan because everybody <laughs> I seem to get on is Arsenal, um, <laughs> yeah. which is just a nightmare. Um, I asked the sort of ultimate no-no question. I had Paul Robinson on, and I was like, oh, no. He's an Arsenal fan, isn't he? He's a big Arsenal fan. So that was the end of that. I just ended the subject quick, and we moved on. Um, I was never going to win that battle. But um, um, you're, you're uh, obviously, like, we, nobody knows really what's going on at the moment. There was, like, lots of debate. I know in Belgium, and I think it's Belgium and Holland, they've just decided to just, that's it, it's gone. Um, yeah. And just, just take it out. What? Like, what do you think about that? Like, if they were to have done that here, would that that would have just kicked off severely, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think um, uh, I was with my uh, father-in-law uh, yesterday. We went on a walk. We were two mm-hmm. mis- two meters distance apart. If anyone wants to dog me in, uh, <laughs> we were, we were, yeah. you know, social distancing. Um, yeah. But yeah. we, I said that to him. I was like, hey, you know, what What do you reckon? And he, because he's a West Ham fan, so for right. him, if it he's if it ended. It. Yeah, if it ended, I said, well, it's got to be null and void. You can't end a season halfway through, like, you mm-hmm. know, with a load of games there. So, for me, uh, if it was null and void, it's null and void. You know, um, it's a good thing for Tottenham because we've got a lot of players. Yeah, I'll take injury. that. If we do, if we do start uh, up again. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been watching all the Bundesliga. Um, I'm pretty... I'm not overly impressed with how it feels without any fans. So it's, mm-hmm. it's really difficult to sort of capture and get into. Um, yeah. I just think it, I think everything would have kicked off had we have stopped. I mean, I think League One and League Two have stopped, right? I believe. I think, so they, again, yeah. yeah the, the only thing they can't work out is the relegation stuff. You just got to null and void it, surely. I just Bit can't do anything more yeah. fairer than, than that. I mean, uh, you know, it would be a shame for someone like Leeds who... I'd like to see back in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we, this is extraordinary circumstance. If we start up, you know, La, Li- La Liga starts June 8th mm-hmm. and then they've got, what, a month to finish their season and then they're practically in pre-season again. Yeah. You know, for next year, I mean, we normally start in August, so we're just going to have a couple of weeks off or we're going to say, look, these three months or two months lockdown, 
Yeah, I, I've got a feeling that, I mean, I can only imagine that they're going to do these games behind closed doors and then maybe have to see what's going on in the rest of the world, like the rest of society, to work out whether it's worth actually even starting a new season just in case the same happens again. Um, unless they can be we're, absolutely we're still, sure. We're still at the point where we could have another uh, like outbreak. Um, second another wave, yeah, yeah. You just, don't, you just don't know, you know. Uh, it's a hard one. Uh, I think behind closed doors is a must. I don't think we can have fans mm-hmm. at all, really. No, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sh- I mean, it'd have to be in everybody's own stadium because like they're doing in Germany. I think they're limiting mm-hmm. the entire stadium to just 300 people. That's, so that's the other like, thing they was talking about. Sorry to, to, uh, to cut you up there, but I, I, was, I was watching Sky Sports News and they were like, well... They, there was some debate going on whether teams could play at their home ground because it might entice fans to go up there and stand outside and do what they were doing in Spain for a little while. So they, they, then they were talking about teams going to other stadiums quite far away and sharing each other's stadiums. And I was thinking, this is becoming even more incons- like Everything is just so but different. If you get a hardcore fan, like you know, someone I work with, he, I mean, we live down in Cambridge and he's... <laughs> He's a Man United fan. He goes every single week. Wow, right? dedication. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he is. Uh, even on our Tuesday or Wednesday night. Like, oh my God. But he would do this, I wouldn't mm-hmm. have thought. If, if they were playing down at White Hart, uh, White Hart Lane, it's White Hart Lane to me. Yeah. Um, if it's down at White Hart Lane, it'd probably fucking go. Yeah. People <laughs> go. Where were Tottenham? If Tottenham were playing at Old Trafford mm-hmm. and you had like these diehard Spurs fans, the people going to go probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just police that, and that's the that's the problem. I don't know what's happening in Germany if fans are doing that. I haven't seen anything to suggest it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like you can travel up, you know, or down to sit and watch it in a pub. So I think that might, no, yeah. might stop a lot of people doing it because they're going to completely miss the game. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a difficult one. I, from what I reckon, I, I, I think we'll probably end up doing it behind closed doors. Yeah. Uh, um, a bit like, you know, the NFL will, will likely do, well, you don't know because of Trump, but, you know, uh, other other companies, yeah, other sports franchises are doing. I think the mm-hmm. NBA is looking to Disney, Disney World in uh, Florida mm-hmm. about half of their uh, matches there at Disney mm-hmm. World, which is pretty, pretty cool, yeah. but... You know. I think uh, I think like that obviously there are sports out there that have decided to go with having that um, non crowd non audience stuff and I'll tell you like like obviously it's it's been with us being wrestling fans we we've, we've kind of seen this from the birth at the very beginning because like a lot of my friends on social media were sort of asking me why I was still posting wrestling stuff and I said mate this is WWE Vince McMahon he don't stop um, nothing's going to stop him. This guy will go on and on. I said, he's still going on. My, my friends just couldn't believe it. They were like, what? They're like Everything's stopped and yeah. WWE still goes on. And, you know, I, I've got to be honest with you, since I've been watching it without the crowd, it has really made me appreciate just how effective an audience is to a wrestling match um, because I am very much taken out of it um, for one reason or the other and it's not because the wrestlers aren't putting in as much effort or it's not it's bad or anything it's just something uh, a real vital piece that that is missing um and uh, you know you can probably get away with it once or twice but i think to have it all the time and obviously like you you mentioned with the bundesliga like you you can kind of hear all the players now like shouting at each other and the celebrations is odd um, yeah, I they kind of after it, that, that's a strange on the, thing. the bench. They're like yeah. two seats apart and two rows back, and you know yeah. I get all of, all of that. But as soon as that guy says, the manager goes, "Wait, uh, <laughs> yeah, Mara goes there, on you go." Yeah, got, yeah. You know he's going to go and touch someone. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think I'm in the same category with you with the rest with wrestling. I um I think I put it on my sort of Twitter last night that. Uh, mm-hmm. I think this has been the longest period that I've gone without watching wrestling constantly. Certainly, right. any other new stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I just re- I do struggle without the fan aspect. Yeah, it, it isn't because the talent are you know performing anything less. They are, in essentially, you know, if you look at take WWE for instance, when you're performing, you're performing to that live audience, and then obviously 
a lot of your moves and the way your uh, facial expressions need to be towards the hard cam and the cameras, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not even, they're not able to perform. It's like going to <laughs> the theatre, mm -hmm. right? The theatre comes out and they've, they've come out and they're like, oh, it's nobody here. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> and then really? like, it just doesn't, you know, yeah. how are you, 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 uh, and certainly in independent wrestling, you kind of bounce off that fan while you need to still yeah, yeah. keep a large interaction with your with your, your cameras and et cetera. But you are, it's an interaction with the fans. It is a soap opera. And without that, mm -hmm. it's really difficult. The, the, the only sport so far that's done, that's come back, and, uh, and obviously mm -hmm. there's only a couple, but that I think is no different is, mm -hmm. um, is the UFC. Uh, right. If you're a long-term UFC fan, mm -hmm. then the Ultimate Fighter is yeah. a prime example that it works without mm -hmm. fans. So it doesn't mm -hmm. make me. When I watch, I've watched all of the UFCs that uh, have come back. Mm -hmm. None of that feels any. That, none of that feels foreign. You know. Yeah. It, uh, it 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 just feels normal because if you're watching the Ultimate Fighter, they're only they're inside of. Uh, uh, the training facility and they have their coaches and you know associates around them mm -hmm. and it's exactly the same it feels no different. yeah um, yeah it's interesting and, interesting and with that, as well, that. Sorry, so with that as well they're not trying to play off to a camera or to an audience they're mm -hmm. literally trying to just knock each other's head off or yeah. submit each other so that it's a very different environment whereas mm -hmm. wrestling we're really just trying to play off that crowd that interaction that you get and it's it's difficult. Yeah, I was on. I I worked the No Fans Monday show with with Wrestle Talk, and mm -hmm. there was maybe ten people at the back behind their main card cam. I right. was one of them because I was, I was just, you know, I was like a runner. I was doing mm -hmm. different things, so making sure the sound was okay, and I was getting feedback from people that were watching it, to tell me if the sound was good, and mm -hmm. you know, various different things I was doing on the show. Um, and that was great. It felt yeah. like that was the same for me, but watching i didn't go back and watch it i don't know how that felt when you were watching it mm -hmm. live and it's the same mm -hmm. maybe with with raw and smackdown while i don't watch those i've seen clips it just doesn't it just doesn't feel right and it's very it's very odd but i think it's something we're gonna need to kind of get used to well. yeah yeah it's, it's interesting you mentioned about ufc because i was listening to um joe rogan talk about the last event they did with no fans and he said the, the fascinating thing was um, they had Daniel Cormier out there commentating and a lot of the guys and girls in in the octagon were taking what he was saying because they could hear him clearly yeah they yeah. were taking his advice and using it and yeah. I thought that was quite interesting one of the guys, um, um, and some of it, it paid off one of the guys actually said it after the match he said <laughs> they were like oh uh, Joe was speaking to him and he was like oh you know they're here to finish your match talk us through it he's like well I heard Daniel Cormier told me about <laughs> this. Uh, he was talking about this wrestling move and I did it and then that's how I finished him and they were yeah. like what and, and Cormier <laughs> even was like oh my god I need to speak you know quieter but you know he's he's one of yeah. the best that's ever fought in the UFC and he's essentially giving people advice without knowing it and he's telling yeah, us yeah 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 <laughs> it's very the UFC was slightly odd because they 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 kept the three commentators on three separate sort of angles of the octagon, but then mm -hmm. at the beginning of the show they're all standing next to each other, touching <laughs> each other, and they went and sat. And even even Rogan actually sat down the show. He was like, "Why yeah. are we doing this? I'm you now, like, why? Are we doing like, what the hell is going on?" But yeah, yeah, okay, I think yeah. UFC uh, uh, is on on uh, Saturday night as well, which is uh, yeah, really pretty good. Forward to watching yeah. That. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, but going back to wrestling, I think the thing, uh, especially for me with WWE, is that when a lot of the, the talent come out and they do their entrances, it's almost like, well, everything's become too perfect anyway, in my eyes, but they do the same exact entrance every single time. It's like a video game. There's no real tweaks to it. And they're yeah. still sort of pretending that there are people out there, <laughs> um, you know, and they're not sort of in the performance center and looking at walls, but they're, they're sort of looking at nobody. A couple of the guys at first, I know Drew was very good at it, started to use the, the camera to look into when he was talking, which I thought made more sense because there's yeah. no one else around. Um, but it's just the little things. The, when you watch some of the, uh, 
sort of performance center stuff or any documentary, especially mm-hmm. with like Triple H when he's working with Talent Inc. 